Hi, so I've got bad news. Meta Platforms, which is formerly known as Facebook, is currently down 70% year to date. Fortunately or unfortunately, I entered into the position probably a little bit too early on. So in this two-part series, I'm going to explain my thought process on the recent earnings call and whether I'm going to add to the position or not. So in the first part, we'll be going through the slide deck and subsequently the earnings release as well. And on the second video in this two-part series, I'll run through some of the concerns that investors should be wary of and maybe run you through an updated DCF model and how I'm going to value Facebook today. So just some top line figures before we actually begin. You can see that revenue for Facebook actually was down 4% year on year and cost was ballooning up 19% year on year. Operating margins from previous um, year on year comparables was from 36% and it actually dropped down to 20% and EPS was down 52% year on year. So why would any sane investor be even remotely interested in this piece of garbage, if I can put it that way. But just some context, um, Facebook is currently trading at around a $260 to $270 billion um, market cap valuation. So I would believe that there will definitely be a price for everything, but is this the right price to enter? Stay on to find out. So if you were to compare the advertising revenue by user geography, you can see that there is evidently a slowdown in both the US and Canada and Europe context. And I've color coded um, the different revenue streams as well. So you see it's color coded in red. It's essentially just collapsing downwards. I think a silver lining is at least for the rest of the world and Asia Pacific region. So it's still on an upward trajectory trend despite the macro headwinds and also the strengthening of the US dollar. I think this is probably attributable to the sheer fact that a majority of the users in US slash Canada um, are iPhone users. And because of the iOS changes, you can kind of extrapolate and guess that, hey, it's gonna affect um, Facebook in a much severe extent, especially when two of the most developed markets um, that commands a higher premium for the advertising revenue as well. But that said, I think just to lay things into perspective and to put it into context, if you to roll it on a three-year basis where you compare Q3 of 2020, 2021, and 2022, if you were to observe from the grander scheme of things, from 2020 to 2021, they actually went up by 33.2%. And this time around, they was down 4%. So even if you add both of them up, I think generally speaking, if you're to compare it on a three-year rolling basis, Facebook don't seem to be quote-unquote dead, and it's still that growth engine that many people look out for. Probably not in the 20-30% range, but if you average it out, it's still at least a good 15%. So that's that. Now, moving on to the segmented results, if you're to just compare the Reality Labs revenue, it essentially collapsed on itself, um, comparing 558 to 285. That's a negative 50% give or take. And if you're pouring in so much capex, so much money into the metaverse or whatever you're going to call it, um, whether is it Horizon, Verizon, whatever, and there is clearly no take up rate, um, investors are definitely going to feel jittery. And just look at the Reality Labs operating loss from 2.6 billion all the way to 3.6 billion. But I think for many early investors that were interested in Facebook in the first place, even though it despite collapsing on itself for several times now, many of us are probably under the impression that, hey, they have one of the most pristine balance sheet out there. Um, they don't have a lot of long-term debt. They have one of the highest operating margin and it's essentially a cash generating machine. But I think in this quarter specifically, it definitely spooked out a lot of all these so-called um, early value investors that tried to come and bargain hunt. Because if you have to compare on a year-on-year -year basis, 13 billion in operating income and it collapsed to 9 billion and who knows what's going to happen in the next quarter. And it's even more concerning when your operating margin drops from 46 to 36 to 20%. So now, I think I also wanted to put things into perspective because many investors out there think that uh, Mark Zuckerberg is essentially just uh, burning through cash um, into reality labs. But if you were to compare the operating expense, at least in this current quarter, the operating expense for the family of apps, which is Instagram, um, WhatsApp, Facebook, etc., it's currently at 16.1 billion, while the operating expense for Reality Labs is 3.9 billion. So if you were to actually compute them together, actually the operating expenses for Reality Labs only makes up 20%. So I'm not saying that 20% is a small figure. Of course, for a 20% expense um, to contribute 285 um, operating income out of the 27 billion, that's quite crazy if you were to ask me because it's less than 1%. But I think just to give credit when it's due, I think Meta Platforms is still plowing in a huge ton of money for their AI and ML algorithms to try to find a way to circumvent 
um, the new policy changes by iOS and potentially by Google in future. Moving forward, I think even in the CFO statement, um, they do see expenses for Reality Labs to continue ballooning. So I guess um, it's probably going to be in the range of 4.55 or even 5.5 billion. So now we are being told the same story. Expenses continue to balloon. Um, you can see that um, R&D now takes up around 33% of the percentage of revenue. Now I know that at first glance, if you to compare the EPS comparables, it's down by at least 50%. So it's a huge and scary headline number. But I'm not really very concerned because currently Facebook is in a very heavy reinvestment cycle. So we should be more concerned about free cash flow and how they're deploying their cash Cash flow, whether is it to KPEX, to buy back shares, etc. etc. So now moving on to the number of users that they acquired, um, they continue to post a um, strong number of growth rates in terms of daily active people and also monthly active people. I, I think there are no questions being asked here where Facebook remains an extremely capable um, customer acquisition platform. Um, regardless whether it's on Facebook, WhatsApp or Instagram. But that said, I think people are more concerned about how they're going to monetize them. And you can clearly observe from the ARPU, which is the average revenue per user, um, it's on a steady downtrend. And would this be a concern? I think we will talk more about it in our valuations of Facebook subsequently. So here comes the part when I'm most uncomfortable in this entire earnings slide, earnings report, whatever you want to call it. So Q3 of last year, Meta actually brought in around 14.1 billion worth of um, cash flow from operations. But just this quarter alone, they brought in 9.6 billion. So if you were to just do a rough math, um, that's actually a one third cut in terms of top line cash flow. And if you were to just deduct the 9 billion in CAPEX, that's essentially zero free cash flow that was brought in um, this quarter. And so much for Facebook being a cash flow generating machine. If they're not even gonna generate any sort of free cash flow, how are they gonna buy back shares and take care of shareholders? I think this was the part that really spooked a lot of investors out. So I do see many of the online commentaries saying that Facebook is spending too much money on CAPEX, on Reality Labs, on um, their AI, their machine learning, etc. But the funny thing is many of these figures um, were actually projected by management team since the start of the year. So this is actually in line with many of the expectations that um, all the different analysts and even retail investors, it's already baked into the model and the assumption. But I think the bigger concern for many investors out there is so what's the trend moving forward for operating cash flow? Is it going to continue collapsing downwards? And if you to just see Q4, Q4 tend to be the best quarter for all these social media platforms. And if you to just follow this trend moving forward, Q4 of 2021, they did 18 billion in operating cash flow. And in Q4 of 2022, what are we supposed to expect? 10 billion, 12 billion, 14 billion? Who knows? Now, if you to go to the earnings release itself, I'll just run through some of the more important factors. So like I said, many of the user metric, um, it's still growing healthily. There is no problems there. Um, I think people that say that Facebook, Instagram, it's a dying platform. Um, Gen Z's are not using it. Everybody's on TikTok. I think that's a debate for another day because clearly there are data that suggests otherwise. So now to move on to the ad impression and price per ad, actually ad impressions delivered across the family of apps increased by 17% year on year, but average price per ad decreased 18% year on year. So you can see that um, it essentially negates each other. And it does seem like Facebook is trying to ramp up the ad impressions delivered to customers. And this might be an impairment of user experience. I'm not too sure about it, but this is just my own comment in my own personal capacity as a user of many of all these social media platforms. So for revenue, um, they decrease 4% year on year. And if you hold constant currency basis, it's actually up 2% year on year. Nothing to be happy about because it's still single low digit growth rate. So now Facebook actually also repurchased 6.55 billion um, worth of class A common stock. Um, in this previous quarter. But I just mentioned previously that the free cash flow for this quarter for Facebook is zero. So where do they get this money to repurchase their shares again? So there are two ways. Number one, they use their cash and cash equivalent or number two, they take on debt and buy back their shares. And that's basically what they did. They actually issued a long-term debt of $10 billion on September 30th of 2022. So Facebook's headcount was 87,000. It's an increase of 28% year on year. Quite ironic that management team actually talk about focusing on prioritization and efficiency, but they go out hiring every single Tom, Dick and Harry out there and the headcount and expenses just keeps on ballooning. But at least for now, the management team actually did guide towards Q4 of 2022 that they're not gonna hire any more headcount. So Facebook also guide the revenue for Q4 of 2022 to be between the range of 30 to 32.5 billion. And for context, um, Q4 of 2021, they did around 33.6 billion. Evidently, revenue is slowing down. Um, there's no questions about it. I think the bigger concern is how is it gonna flow towards operating cash flow and what will the expense profile be like? And would it continue to deteriorate the free cash flow that is being generated by the firm or not? I think that's a very big question mark that we have to bake into many of our assumptions or our models that we are trying to model Facebook out. So they did say that they're currently in an investment cycle, so it takes time to play out. 
And especially for investors that are not patient enough to see Mark Zuckerberg succeed or fail, then I don't think this is an investment for you. So the funny thing is they're expecting their total expenses to be in the range of 85 to 87 billion. And more importantly, to deliver the last nail onto the coffin, they did say that they're anticipating their 2023 full year expenses to be in the range of 96 to 101 billion. So if you compare this to, um, no wonder investors are spooked out. So we will take into account all these numbers and guidance that they gave us um, to our forward projections and our DCF model as well. So they did allude to the fact that their growth in cost of revenue is expected to accelerate driven by infrastructure related expenses and to a lesser extent, reality labs hardware costs. So for many of the people that say that, oh, they're just gonna spend tons and tons of money and burn it through reality labs, I think um, that is still a very big concern, of course, as a fellow Meta shareholder as well. But I think I'm more concerned um, if they just focus solely on reality labs and just forget about um, their family of apps. So evidently, they're not forsaking the legacy business. They're still plowing in a lot of money and expenses. But I think the key consideration here is what's the ROI on all those spendings on back onto the family of apps. And I think in the earnings call itself, they did try to put some color to it. But many of the discussions from senior management were rather vague and it didn't really provide a lot of detail to it. So now, the CAPEX for 2022 is be between the range of 32 to 33 billion. So this is a much tighter range um, for us to project forward. And of course, there's only one quarter left. They should have already budgeted the amount of CAPEX to put in for this year. But I think the bigger concern also is that um, CAPEX will continue to balloon out into 2023 between 34 to 39 billion dollars. So if you were to just scroll through the income statement, revenue is collapsing, um, R&D is ballooning, even though we don't really know um, whether the R&D will pay off. And there is this huge line item, which is the 10 billion in terms of long-term debt they just took on. So as of now, Meta still has a relatively pristine balance sheet. So they're slowly piling on their debt. And I think the bigger question many of the investors should ask themselves is, is this a good time to buy back their own share? And is the ROI from the buybacks gonna exceed um, the cost of debt? I think as of now, um, given today's valuation of around 260 billion, I don't think it's a very bad deal, but I think it's totally dependent on the outlook of the company moving forward from here. For current and potential meta investors, um, do feel free to leave in the comment section down below. Do you agree with what management team is currently doing? So with that, I'll see you in the next video, but more importantly, I will see you on the moon. Goodbye.